Okay, so this video will be about uh, most common percentage calculations. We're going to start with some basic percent calculations, then we'll do percent change, then we'll calculate percent of a number, profit margin, see how we can get the percent of the total, and all types of things like that. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is understand how we store percentages in Google Sheets. So if I go to a cell and type 25%, really what gets stored in that cell, if we switch that under formatting to a number, it's 0 0.25. So that's what we store. So all these percentages we see here are visual representations of what's in the cell. And if we want to see what's in there, we switch to number, and those are the numbers we have. And that's what we use when we actually do the math. Okay, so switching back to percentage, so it looks pretty. So now the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to calculate a percentage of a number, the simplest thing. So if you want to see uh, what's 8.26% of this $13,000 number, you start with an equal sign and all you have to do is take the number and multiply it, which is our asterisk, by our percentage. Hit enter and that shows me 8.26% of this number. Then I can copy this down and there I have it. That's all those percentages. Now if I wanted to get the total of this, obviously we can use our sum function to do that. So let's just select this, close, that's our sum. So that's all there is to it. The key thing here is to understand what's happening in the background. And the only thing you need to know is that every calculation that we do happens on our default formatting. So if I switch all of this to regular uh, number format, so we can see what's going on. So basically that's gonna be the number and we take this number, multiply by 0 0.0826, and the formatting is kind of, again, tricking us a little bit. Let's just do automatic, so we can see the number, right? So there it is. So we take this number, 13.4.67, and we multiply by 0 0.0826, and this crazy number we have here, and then we get this number. That's really what's happening in the background. Now, uh, visually, it kind of looks like this, as we look at that. So that's how we calculate a percentage of a number. Just take the number, multiply it by a percentage. Let's move to the next case. We're gonna do percent change. And in this particular case, I have some uh, numbers that we expect. So this is uh, what we have as budgeted expense. And we have the actual numbers that come in. Now we want to be able to see what's the percent difference, percent change, however you want to call this, right? So to calculate that, I'm going to start with an equal sign. I'm going to take my actual, I'm going to divide it by my expected number. And if I simply just leave it at that, just hit enter, what I'm getting is 1.009. So if you look at these numbers, this number is 13,467. This is a little greater number, so the number grew a little bit. And it grew, this one is the 100%, and this 0.09059182, that's how much it grew, not the one. So we need to just subtract a one out of this, and that would be the growth percentage we have out of this. So if we copy this down, so let's try to switch this to percent. So now we have our percent change. So this is positive percent change, this is a negative percent change, and so on until we get to the end. Now, one common mistake that I see sometimes people do, they will go here as a total percent change and do the average of these percentages. You can't do that. So if you also want to know what's the total percent change, you simply do the same thing on your totals. So we take the actual, divide by expected, minus one. 
and that's our percent change percent formatting so 3.71 percent there we go so that works now we need to improve this formula just a little bit and i'll show you why so a lot of times when you have this sort of calculations you may uh, have a template for people to fill in. If we are creating a template for people to fill in, it's gonna look like this. And then we want them to enter the expected and actual percentages. But what's going to happen is because our formula includes a calculation that takes one of our numbers and divides it by the other. If one of the numbers is blank, it's gonna treat it as zero, and we're gonna get that division by zero error. We don't want that to happen, so a quick fix for this is to use a function called if error. So I'm just gonna take my formula and cut it. That's my control X, command X, depending on the platform you're on. So I'll do if error function. And if error function is this function that can handle all kinds of errors. So the first thing in our if error function is this value. So the value is the formula that could potentially return an error pretty much. So that's our formula. So I'm gonna just paste that in, comma, and after the comma, what to do when that formula actually returns an error. So it's actually gonna either do this, and if that's an error, it's gonna do what's after the comma. So I'm gonna say if there's an error, let's just put a zero in here. We'll just treat it as a 0% chain. Uh, in those cases. So I'll copy this down. I shouldn't really see any difference in most of this as I'm copying this down, right? Uh, but what's going to be different now if this number isn't here, see, I'm getting as a 0% change. Now, this is where it's very arguable. So a lot of people treat this in many different ways. So maybe you don't want a 0%. Maybe you can do like, let's leave it blank. So instead of zero, you could do double quotes and just leave it empty in case it's zero, right? And when we have a number, that will actually populate. That's another way to handle it. So there are a lot of different ways people handle this. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what's the right way. It doesn't seem like there is one. But uh, one way to think about it is we can say that if this is blank and it's said from blank from the actual this much, it's a 100% increase in this, right? Because we did this much and by that much it, it, it increased. So technically we, we could say it's a 100% increase. The same way if it was expected to do this much and now it went to zero, it's a 100% decrease, which is how this formula right now is going to work. Now, depending on how you want to handle it, it's up to you. You may want to use like ifs function to be able to handle some of those cases. So if you're curious about that, watch my if and ifs function video. And I cover a lot about that, but this should cover all the generic cases. So in my case, I'm going to just say, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave this blank and all the other cases will just calculate the percent change. Now, moving on to our next case, I'm going to go to percent off. So in this particular case, I'm going to try to see, we have sales and cost of goods, and I want to see what percentage of sales is our cost of goods. This is gonna be a basic formula. When you have situations like this, you take your cost of goods number, which is usually the smaller number, and divide it by the greater number, which is our sales. And that should tell us what percentage of cost of goods is our sales. If I drag this down, there we are. We move this to percentage formatting. So 89% of our sales is our cost of goods. So that's what we're getting because we took this number and we divide by this number. This number is basically 89% of this number. That's exactly what we're getting here. Moving to the next one. And again, if you want this one, you have to do the same thing, right? So just take this number divided by this. I'm not going to go through that. So I'm going to go to profit margin tab. This is gonna be very similar to the other tab, which is percent off. 
So what is the profit margin? So if I take the cost of goods and divide it by my sales, I'm going to hit enter. So it tells me that the cost of my product is 89% of the sales amount. So my profit percentage is going to be that remaining 11%, basically the difference I have. It's, it's not 11, it's a little less than 11, but anyways, that 11% that we have. So to get to that 11%, we have to take one minus the 0 0.89, whatever number, to get to that. So I'm gonna say one minus this, and that gets us to our number, about 10%. Copy this down and move to percentage, and there we are. So that's our profit margin. See, 10%, 35%, 16% for this product, and so on. And this is the total. So again, don't do an average. So don't do, if you're trying to get this number below, don't do this. Okay? It's not, it's not the same. Okay, so just get your totals and get the difference. That's good. That's our profit margin. Now, uh, moving to our next case. In this case, I want to calculate what percentage of the total is each one of our expenses. So in this case, we have this $13,000 and we have all of these different expenses and this is our total expense. I want to know in the total expense, what percentage is expense number one? And I'm gonna do it for 2016 and 2017. I'm gonna start with an equal sign and to do this, again, this is kind of like, how do we figure out what is this number percentage of the other number, right? We kind of did this before. I'm going to take this number and divide it by the total number. That's going to tell me what percentage of the total is this number. So hit enter. So that's that. Again, it says a dollar amount. Doesn't make any sense. It should be a percentage. We'll switch it off. So that's 16% of this. That's what we have. Now, what I want to be able to do, I want to just drag this formula down and get the rest. But if I do this, see, I'm getting this division by zero errors. And if I check what happened is when I dragged it over, this moved down, but this also moved down below. So now I'm dividing by this empty cell. So I'm dividing by zero and I have this problem. So I'm gonna hit escape, go back to my formula. I don't want this to move down this 82,990 number. So that's in our ninth row, and that's a B9. So I'm gonna lock that nine by adding dollar in front of that. I'm gonna hit enter, and I'm gonna go click back on it and copy it over. So there we are. That's just spot check one of these. See this number divided by this number, perfect. Those are all these numbers. So all of these numbers together should add up to 100%. So if we do like a sum, we have our 100%. Now to get to our 2017 numbers, I could just simply just drag this to the right. And just to make sure this worked, I Double click, see, we take this number divided by this number. The reason this works is because when I was locking this, I was very careful and I only locked the row here below. That way it allows me to drag to the right and move from B to C column for both of my references. So again, I'll just copy it over. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. So again, we'll look, that seems to be accurate. It's good to always spot check these things to make sure it's doing the right thing. It does, so we also sum this to make sure it's 100%. So percent of total, that should take care of that. And moving on to this tab, I believe this should be the last one. We'll do our percent increase. So basically we have some numbers we're increasing those numbers by certain percentages. We want to see how much it is 
if we increase by 17.96%. So I'm going to start with an equal sign. We're going to take the number we have, which is the current number, and we can multiply it by the percentage. So if we do that, it's just going to tell us what is 17.96% of this number. That's our number. Now, what we need to do, that's the increase part. We need to also add the $13,000, the original number, to it. So I'm going to take that plus this. Hit enter. That's our number increased by that percentage. That's that. That's this. That's that. So on. Another way to do this, you'll take your number, the current amount, and you multiply it in parentheses, 1 plus your percentage. It's really the same formula in a different way. So I hit enter, I copy it down, I should get exactly the same numbers. That's our number increased by that percent. All right. One other thing I'm going to show you. Uh, what if we increase this number by this percent multiple times? So uh, this is what we call compound interest. So we're raising it. So the idea here is going to be this. Once I raise that by 17.96%, this number, I want to be then able to raise the same number by that same 17.96% again. So basically, I want to take now this number and multiply it by 1 plus this percentage. And that gets us to this number. So that would be two step way of doing it. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with one step. So I'm going to take the current number and I'm going to multiply that by one plus the percentage. And then I'm going to do the exponent. So that's our shift six that gives us this exponent sign. And then how many times did I do this? I did this once here by 17.96% and then the second time here. So that's the two, twice. Hit enter, I should get exactly the same number. The power of doing this is that now I can raise it by as many times as I, as I want. So if I already have this number, now I want to raise it again by 17.96%, I just do three and that's the next number over. And there we have it. So if you're interested in this uh, more, I have a finance video and I talk in detail about this interest and other functions that you can use to get the same totals. But that should do for our percentages. I think those are the most common situations when you use a percentage and this should pretty much cover all of them. And again, in this particular case, if I want to get the total, I'm just going to do some of these new numbers. That should get us our new total. That should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.